you overfed turkey eating people. How y'all doing? Gobble. This all right, so before we get started, Miss Jenny is so awesome to see you back up here. Uh, Miss Jenny had surgery this yes. last week and has been down and out for a few days and uh, trying to get over some soreness. Uh, we also have Buddy is out today. He had to go take Earl, care of Earl. Earl, I'm sorry. The other Buddy, you're right back over there. Uh, Earl, he's uh, been out for a little bit, so y'all keep him in your prayers. Uh, but let me ask you a question. How many of you started your day off in a weird way? Anybody? A little bit. Well, let me tell you my story today. This has been an interesting day. Oh, this is a good one. Last night, we lost power at our house, all right? Now, before y'all all say, oh, don't worry, Aww. it was, thank you, I was waiting for that, but it was a good day, power went out, so last night, I looked at Kay before the power went out, so you know, I should have had you brought home some pizzas from town, and no longer, and no more than I said that, in 10 minutes, the power went out, and we're looking at each other, and we're like, well, I guess we should have had the pizzas, <laughs> so we get up, and the power company said it's not going to come on until 10 o'clock. So what do you do? You get up and just go on into town and you have some pizza and you have some ice cream. We came back. Of course, the power company, they lied. It wasn't 10 o'clock. It didn't come back on until after we had went to sleep. So when power is out, we set our phones on our little tunes to the alarm clock. And so this morning it was set to go off and I had this really weird dream. Now, I'm a war veteran, so I have this dream that I'm sitting in a parking lot and General Colin Powell comes up and starts talking to me. And we're talking about the good old days of the Persian Gulf War, right? And then he leaves and this guy comes up and he attacks us with a gun. He shoots at us, and I remember thinking, oh, here we go again. And all of a sudden, the dream ended, and Kay's alarm clock went off, and it sounded like an ice cream truck in our bedroom. And I remember going from this point of being shot at to having ice cream, thinking, oh, this is a weird way to start the Sunday morning. And then the power came back on, so the alarm clock came back on with the radio station wasn't in tune. So it's like, all right, Lord, you got my attention. I'm up. We're going. And I came into the Lord in this morning, and I really felt like the presence of the Lord uh, was like really right there in Scripture reading this morning. And I want to share with you what He said to, uh, through uh, in Scripture this morning in Psalms one thirty eight. First of all, how many of you know it's our job to give God thanks? So much. If you give God thanks in all things, then you'll find that God will move in all things. Amen. But it says, "I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart." I will sing your praises before the gods. I will bow my your holy or I, will, I, will, I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and unfaith and faithfulness. For your promises are backed by the all the honor of your name. Let me ask you a question. How many of you would recognize that God has fulfilled all of his promises in your life? Amen. All the things that he said that he would do for you, hadn't he done them? Right. Look at verse three, it says, As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. Every king in all the earth will thank you, Lord, for all of them will hear your words. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's ways, for the glory of the Lord is very great. And though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble. He keeps his distance from the proud. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. And you reach out your hand, and your power in your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. Can you say amen? Amen. And it says, For your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. Uh, you, for you made me. How many of you recognize God made you? Amen. Guys, I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to give the Lord some thanks this morning. Amen? amen. And it's not because of a turkey. It's not because of dressing or stuffing. It's not because of sweet potato souffle. It's not because I had a house uh, full of people. It's not because I'm rich, because well, God knows I ain't. But how many of you know that God is worthy of praise? All of it. And right. just because he fulfills his promises to you, that's worthy of praising him. Amen? That's Will right. you lift your voices this morning as we praise him and just celebrate him for everything that he has not only done for you in the past, but everything that he's continuing to do and all the things that he will do. Amen? <laughs> Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we praise you and Lord, we glorify you. Lord, this is a morning that we come in. Lord, we know we have a lot of people traveling uh, because of the holidays. So, Father, first of all, for those that are out traveling, Lord, we ask that you would bless them and give them safe return. Father, we pray over this city. 
that, Lord, this would be a Sunday, that, Father, that your Holy Spirit would break out in churches, and, Father, people get thankful and give you praise and glory. And, Lord, when your people shout out praises unto you, Lord, you move in their midst. So, Father, I ask in Jesus' name that, Father, that you would move in this place today, that, Father, that you would start doing works that, Father, that are inconceivable to somebody that don't know you. But, Lord, to you, your word says all things are possible through you. So, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that, Father, as we open up our hearts, open up our minds, our thoughts, Father, our voices unto you, and we worship you, Father, in spirit and truth, that, Father, that you would come move in this place this morning. Father, I pray for those that have wake up that deal with fear. Father, deal with anxiety. Father, deal with depression. Lord, that deal with issues that, Father, that it takes them away from being with the body of Christ. And, Lord, I ask that, Father, that you would heal them and touch them and, Father, give them the opportunity <laughs> to walk in freedom, to walk in joy. Father, to walk in blessings. Lord, to look at you and realize who you truly are. Lord, you're not just our creator. You're not just our father. But, Lord, you are our friend. And so, Lord, today we want to say thank you so much for everything that you've done. We're giving you praise, glory, and honor. No one else deserves that praise. Only you do, Lord. So, Father, we thank you, and we praise you, and we glorify you. And, Lord, we ask that you'll just receive our worship this morning. And, Father, as I prayed earlier, Lord, I ask that you would open up the gates of heaven and allow the heavenly choir to come join us this morning. So, Lord, we love you, we praise you, and, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Let's worship. <laughs> well, good morning, folks. Good morning. How many of y'all are a few pounds heavier? Amen. And that's okay. Man, there's so many things to be thankful for. Had a had a good good Thanksgiving. Had some family come in. I got some some family from the DFW area with me today, so that's exciting. So, but it's good to see all smiling faces this morning. Let's get our praise and worship on. I got a story too good to hide I was a blind man wandering until I saw the light Yeah, I got a story I can't deny I'm a living, breathing miracle and I just got to testify Ain't nobody love me like Jesus Ain't nobody love me this good Ain't nobody love me like Jesus And I know, I know, nobody could Tell me who could give me this freedom Tell me who could give me this pardon Ain't nobody love me like Jesus And I know, I know, nobody could Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody Now I'm anointed to bring the news Everything he did for me, I know he'll do for you. Amen. He gave me joy for the morning, for the ashes of crown. And I'm a walking, talking miracle, and I just got to let it out. Come on. Hey. Ain't nobody love me like Jesus. Ain't nobody love me this good. Ain't nobody love me like Jesus. And I know, I know, nobody could. Tell me who can give me this freedom. Tell me who can give me this far. And ain't nobody love me like Jesus. And I know, I know, nobody could. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody. Nobody could pull me from the darkness. Save me by the blood. Raise me from the ashes. I know, I know, nobody could break off every shackle, tear down every wall, set free every captive. I know, I know, nobody could pull me from the darkness, save me by the blood, raise me from the ashes. I know, I know, nobody could break off every shackle. And tear down every wall Break me every captain Oh, I know, I know Nobody could Ain't nobody Ain't nobody Ain't nobody Ain't nobody, ain't nobody.
nobody love me like Jesus. Ain't nobody love me this good. Ain't nobody love me like Jesus. And I know, I know, nobody could. Tell me you can give me this freedom. Tell me you can give me this far. And ain't nobody love me like Jesus. I know, I know, nobody could. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody. I know, I know, nobody could. I know, I know, nobody could. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody. I know, I know, nobody could. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I find, as weird as it sounds, it's hard to believe sometimes <laughs> that the creator of the universe, how real his love is. That's right. It is. That's right. It is real. Right. He does love you. Absolutely. And ain't nobody loves us like Jesus does. Right. Just get that in your mind. Get it in your heart. Get it in your soul. Believe it. That's right. Amen. Why you ever chose me? Has always been a mystery All my life I've been told I belong At the end of a line With all the other not quite With all the never get it right But it turns out they're the ones You were looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Moses had stage fright And David brought a rock to a sword fight you picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen and you changed the world well the moral of the story is everybody's got a purpose so when i hear that devil start talking to me saying who do you think you are i say i'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history. As another blood bond, faithful member of the family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history. Go down in history. As another blood bought faithful member of the family. Oh, and if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go, buddy, trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus.
so are you weary and troubled no light in the darkness you'll see there's a light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace through death into life everlasting he passed and we followed him there over us sin no more hath dominion for more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strange. In the light of his glory and grace His word shall not fail you He promised Believe him and all will be well Then go to a world that is dying his perfect salvation to tell turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his Glory and grace. Thank you, Jesus. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope 
who could imagine oh great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages steps down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me jesus yours is the victory oh hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope jesus christ my living hope oh god you are my living hope thank you lord you are a living hope you're not dead you raised from the dead and now you're living inside of us. All we have to do is say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Yes. Come into my heart and save me, Jesus. Yes, yes, if, if you haven't done that, I encourage you to do that this morning. <coughs> and say, Lord, I, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And I don't know if I were to leave this earth right now, if, if I'd be in heaven with you, Jesus. But I want to be. You can come up to the front. You can talk to any of the, of the pastors here. Make sure you get that right. Make sure you get that right because he is a loving God and he wants you in the, in the family. So if you don't know, if you were to leave this earth, where you would go, heaven or hell, make sure you know today. Thank you, Jesus. Make sure you know today because there's plenty of people here who can pray with you. That's right, amen. In Jesus' name. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself 
and he carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing jesus messiah name above all names blessed redeemer emmanuel the rescue for sinners the ransom from heaven Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. His body the blood, His blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled, and the veil was torn love so amazing love so amazing yeah. jesus messiah name above all names Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. Lord of all, all our hope is in you, all our hope is in you, all the glory to you, God, the light of the world. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, Lord of Father, when I hear that song, Lord, I can't help but think about the name of Emmanuel. Lord, I thank you that, Father, as it was prophesied, Father, to Mary and Joseph, that, Lord, then this child that would come on this earth would be the peace, be the light to all men. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that, Father, we're able to receive him. And, Lord, he is God with us. Lord, not God away from us. Not the God that we got to go seek out. But, Lord, the God with us here today. So, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that, Father, all we have to do is cry out upon the name of Jesus, the name above all names, the name that nobody can dispute. Lord, we thank you that, Father, that you are the champion of this world.
Lord, we thank You and we praise You and we glorify You. That, Lord, You are the great Father in heaven. And, Lord, You have given us an eternal gift through Your Son. And, Lord, You have given us the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we just praise You in Your holy name today. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said? Amen. Why don't you all give the Lord a loud hand clap this morning. Amen. Come on. Ain't He worthy? All right. Have we got any visitors with us this morning? Anybody's never, ever been to Impact Cowboy Church before? If you just raise your hand, we'd like to get you a visitor's card. I don't think I'll see any new folk, but it's good to see all of y'all here this morning after our Thanksgiving holidays. Wednesday night services are at 7 p.m. this week. This week. Hope you can come out and join us. There will be... It, let me get it here. There will be, I hadn't read it beforehand, there will be a women's self-defense seminar on Saturday, December 3rd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. For more info, you can call Tina Roddy. So uh, she's not here today, but you can get in touch with her. Her phone number's on the bulletin here. Rayford Island's adult Sunday school class meets every Sunday morning from 9 to 9.45 in her youth building. Right back out the door here. And uh, get on out there and hook up with a Sunday school class. Our church work days for November and December have been canceled. So get your announcements and activities into Miss Maryland by Wednesdays at noon so she can have them in the bulletin for the Sunday after. The ICCN calendar of events and mission news prayer needs is on the back bulletin board. These will be updated monthly. You can also scan the QR code below on your bulletin for that calendar. Pastor Jesse. We all fancy with that uh, QR code now. I mean, we're moving on up in the world. So listen, it's the, what, what's today? It's the, almost the last day, the last days of November. So we want to end with a bang because we got an offering of $8,783. So I didn't I didn't see a whole lot of children's around here. Children's, children's. When I was lifeguarding back in the day, we had rules on the back uh, lifeguard room, and they misspelled children's and it said children's. So I just called it children's from then on because you know, it just works. So uh, <laughs> I don't see many children's here this morning, but we're gonna run the horses anyway. So I need all the kiddos, all the anybody who wants to run. We're going to run the horses because that is an amazing offering, and we want to give thanks and praise to Almighty God. So DJ, crank up the tunes back in the back, and we'll, I'll finish, uh, finish up with the announcement. Mona. Y'all trying to find Toby Mac? Alright.
times i don't care who you are all right so the general fund a whopping eight thousand five hundred fourteen dollars man that's amazing that's a blessing children's fund fifty nine dollars and twenty five cents arena fund one hundred dollars missions twenty five dollars outreach fund uh building fund sixty dollars youth fund twenty five dollars for a grand total of eight thousand seven hundred eighty three dollars and twenty five cents wow Man, that is good news. That is good news. God is good. And all the time. I'm so thankful. I have so many things to be thankful for. Even when you're down in the dumps and you, it's like, man, you're not feeling good. There's always something to be thankful for. The air you breathe. Are you sitting in a dry spot? Do you have a vehicle to get you here and there? If you don't, you, can get, you got friends to come pick you up. If you're not, you got Jesus to look out for you. Just trust him. There's so many things to be thankful for. I'm thankful for my family that came down from the DFW area. I love my cousins. and So it's just good folks. It was just a good season and it's a good Sunday. And I'm thankful for my church family. So, so many things to be thankful for. So, Lord, we thank you, God, for all the things. God, you're so good. And your mercy endures forever. Most of all, we thank you for your love. And that you care about us. You want what's best for us. So Lord, we pray today for your kingdom come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are and what you've done for us. God, we pray your blessings on this morning. And uh, we just give you praise in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. All right. So the few, the proud, the kiddos that are here this morning, y'all come on. We're going to go meet outside. Yeah. All right, guys, we got a little uh, surprise for you this morning. If y'all were here this last week, hang on. If y'all were here this last week, you actually heard us actually pray for Miss Judy because she lost her keys. How many of you have ever lost your keys and you just couldn't find them and you needed help trying to find your keys? So she came to church and she mentioned it, so we prayed her find Why don't you tell them what happened for you? Okay. Um, I was very upset when I came in last Sunday and first person that prayed for me was Jesse and uh, then I had Stan during his message he started praying I had the church praying when I got home first place I went was in my closet one box that I did not even look into I had three purses in there the first purse that I thought my keys was in was a gray one it was not in there I went to the second purse it was a black one there was my keys, my important keys, my church keys, my rent keys, all the keys I need, they were right there, all because of prayer, and I give the Lord all the thanks. He is an awesome, powerful God that hears and answers prayers, and I thank everybody that prayed for me. Amen. Thank you. What was interesting, as we started praying for her, um, I prayed. I prayed for her that she would actually be able to find them, and then we mentioned about finding them in a box. And as soon as she called me and said she had found them, I asked her, where did you find them? 
Found them in a box. How many of you know that the best place to ever look is the place you haven't looked yet? Amen. Um, today's uh, message is a lot about uh, forgiveness, grace, mercy, but most of all, peace. How many of you know that we need peace in our life today more than anything? And we started talking about Thanksgiving last week, and we started sharing about what Thanksgiving was truly about. Guys, listen to me. Thanksgiving is not just a holiday in America. It should be an everyday uh, lifestyle for us as Christians. Amen? And when we have peace, we understand what God is doing in our life. How many of you are walking through kind of a, 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 an unorganized, chaotic time in your life right now? Raise your hand. Because here, this message is really about you today. I want you to be able to share with some things. There are some things that we have in life that are not good and they're not easy to deal with. Uh, some of you got some family members that you want to strangle. Don't do it because you'll have to start a prison ministry, okay? Some of you have got a job that you would like to quit and you'd like to walk away from. Don't do it because it's paying your bills. Sometimes you are right where you are need to be at because God is working in you, through you, to do a miraculous thing. I want to give uh, the Lord some praise this morning, and I'm going to share with you in Psalms 111. If y'all would go ahead and turn to Psalms 111. I'm going to share with you, I hope that you have your highlighters out and your pens out. There's three points that we're going to have to really, or four points that I want y'all to highlight in your Bible. And as y'all are turning there, I'm going to go ahead and pray and we'll get started. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you that, Lord, today's word, Father, will be directly from your throne room. Father, I ask that, Father, that you would help me step out of the way, and, Lord, for you to step up, that, Lord, as we start looking to see what you're going to do in the life of this congregation, Lord, I am excited because, Lord, I feel today is a day that you're going to do an incredible work in the life of the people that are here today. Father, I pray for all those that are missing today that uh, will be coming back in and watching this later on video. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that, Father, that you would just show up in such a mighty way that, Lord, all the Asherah poles, Lord, all the false gods, Father, all the false idols that have been raised up in people's lives will fall today simply because the name of Jesus is believed upon and praised. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name that, Lord, that you are the hope that we need and that, Lord, without you, Lord, we have no hope. So, Father, I ask that, Father, that you would move not only in this church today, but, Father, I pray for every church in Nacogdoches County, that, Father, there'd be such a power rise up within the praise of the people, that, Lord God, you would be praised, Lord, in every church in Nacogdoches County. So, Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said? All right, so Psalms 111. We're going to go from verses 1 through 10. Get your highlighters and your pens ready. I'm going to give you time as we go through it, to highlight it. Our prayer, verse 1, says, I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. So where are we at right now? We are in the assembly. We are with God's people. So where is the best place that you can find to shout out and extol the Lord? Guys, when you come into church, man, this is a joyful time. I preached a message one time about the joy of the Lord at a revival, and they were the most depressed-looking people I have ever met in my life. It was horrible. It was one of those things I kept thinking, i got to get out of here. How do I get out of this place without uh, causing a commotion? Because, man, I'm just preaching about the joy of the Lord. And I finally stopped and looked at them and said, you know, if I was a visitor, first time in your church, I would never come back. When you walk into the house of the Lord, the joy of the Lord ought to be in your face, written on your countenance. The people ought to know that you are of the Lord's people. You are the renowned of the Lord. Amen? And what does the Bible say? Let the Lord, let the people of the Lord say so. Amen? So guess what? When somebody comes up and says, what is the reason for your joy? Why are you so happy? Man, all you got to do is say, let me tell you about Jesus. How many of you listen to that song, let me tell you about my Jesus? Verse 2 says, this is one I want you to underline. It says, great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever sat down and pondered or wondered about the things that God has done for you? How many of you have experienced where God has moved in your life? He's done something great, and it was so remarkable that all you could do is say, 
My God, that was so incredibly awesome. Highlight in that in your Bible, because man, that is worthy to remember. We need to think about what God has done. We need to praise Him. But listen to me. We don't need to praise God just for what He's done. We need to praise God for what He's doing and what yet He will do again in the future. Amen? Verse 3 says, Glorious and majestic are His deeds, and His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Number two, verse five, says he provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. How many of you got food in your pantry? Amen? Oh, come on now. If we, if, if we get into the sermon day, we might get out of here by 1120. I'm lying right now, but hey, can't help but try. Guys, I don't know about y'all, but there's been some times that we may not have much in our cabinet. We may not have much to our possession. But how many of you know God gives everything that we need? I heard it said on the radio, and it was very interesting, that God gives us everything that we need. And if we have something that we don't or there's something we don't have right now, apparently that may be God's way of saying we don't need it. Amen? Maybe we need to focus on what we do have because that's what God saw fit to give us. Amen? Verse 6 says, He has shown His people the power of His works, giving them the lands of other nations. Verse 7, I want you to highlight this one. The works of His hands are faithful and just, and all His precepts are trustworthy. Let me ask you a question. Is God trustworthy and is He faithful to you? Is His works, are they holy unto you? Are they the offering that Father would give a child? And when you say yes... Boy, we need to remember who God is. God gives you things when you least expect it. There's a young lady right over here on the second row. Would you come on up here with me just for a second? I'm not going to embarrass you too bad. But this little girl, we have watched her grow up from since she was like really probably, what, a year and a half old or something, three years. And we got a chance to watch her. This weekend, she got her first deer this weekend. And it actually got put on the Facebook, and she had a picture of her. I wish we had it up there, but I didn't have power at the house. I couldn't draw it down. But let me tell you something. How many of you realize that even in a hunt, when God is doing something in your life, when he provides you the opportunities for something, even though it may seem small to some people, some people say, I don't know if I'd give praise for that. Let me tell you something. When you got meat in the freezer, how many of you know that's worth praising God for? Amen? And when you see a father and a daughter get out and go to a hunt together, let me tell you something. Tell me that ain't God. God is about restoring families, about bringing people back together. And I'm so proud of you, young lady. You're an awesome young lady. She did get scoped by the gun, though. She got her a little mark up here. But by golly, the deer paid for it. Amen? So why don't you all give her a hand clap for coming up here. Congratulations, babe. Love you. I love watching these kids grow up. I've made a comment this last week that I'm now a generational pastor. After being here 15 years, I'm seeing children growing up, getting married and having babies and watching them uh, do things. And let me tell you something, that is the greatest reward that a pastor can ever have is to watch children grow up. And especially when those children grow up to worship the Lord. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but that is something that the works of his hands are faithful and just, and all his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordered his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. How many of you know that when God has done something for you, he is worthy of praising. Amen. I'm going to ask George Burns if he'd come up here with me this morning. George Burns shared something with me this morning. And George is, he is of an age that I can't say that I am a father figure for him, but I can say that I'm a, a big brother figure for him to a degree in the ministry. And he was sharing something with me this morning, and it just flew all over me. Because how many of you know God is in the redemptive work? And when there's something that's really bad in your life, it's going to take something really powerful to change that about being. Amen? So, George, why don't you share with them what happened and kind of give them the whole backstory so they understand. <laughs> All right. Well, I was kind of put on the spot, so I don't know how this will come out, but I'll do the best I can. So many, many years ago, probably 2022, 20, somewhere in there when 
I just met my wife's family and her uh, her mother's side of family is from Louisiana and I mean you know there, there's some of the older generation that are kind of setting their ways you know and and they don't see things the way things are evolving or changing or whatever and it's not that her grandfather did not like me. He liked me. He just did not like me marrying his granddaughter. And, uh, you know, to tell you that, that story, I mean, he, he was never rude to me or mean to me, but he did not even want to attend my wedding. And I was telling Pastor Stan, of course, he kind of knows the background of that story, but this past Thanksgiving... You know, it was such a wonderful time there, and we were sharing what we're so thankful for, and he he mentioned that he was thankful for me and my grand and uh, his granddaughter, and he even invited me to preach at his church. He is a he is a Southern Baptist preacher, and like I say he's he's was well, kind of set in his ways until God got a hold of him, and <laughs> we we can all get like that. We can all be set in our ways, and I mean, what better way to tie in with his message? You know, God was in the restoring business. He restored that relationship to the type of relationship that he he wanted. But it was in God's timing. I mean, it didn't happen overnight. Like I said, it's been, uh, you know, I was dating her two years before we got married. We've been married 20 years, so it's been about 22 years. And God fully restored that. I mean, I've I seen it as such an honor for him to invite me to come preach in his church. And, I mean, just seeing God move in that situation is, is just so awesome. I mean, sharing it with him and, and really kind of really thinking about it really now, uh, like I said, it's 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 such an honor. And I, Pastor Stan wanted me to share that with y'all. So, Awesome, awesome. One of the hardest things that we have to do is, how many of you have ever said you wish that God would move a little faster sometimes? Anybody? Sometimes God don't move on the speed that we moved, or we would like him to move, but yet we see when God does. How many of you know that when God moves is a really good time to sit down and give him thanks? I don't know about y'all, but I remember the, the era that I grew up in. I'm 54 now. And that time frame was not what it is today. And so interracial marriages and relationships, that was something that was kind of out of the norm. But yet to watch how God would come in and work in the midst of that and restore that and bring it to a place of health and healing, the greatest honor that a pastor can ever give to anyone is to share the pulpit that God has graced him with. So that is the greatest gift that that man could offer George is to come preach at my church. Now, here's the thing about it is he said that that church is only members of about 10 people in the church and a lot of older people in it. And he said, well, won't you bring some of them people from your church and help fill this place? How many of you know if we could do that, by golly, we would be experience the greatest move that God would ever do? Amen. So when that happens, I told him, I said, looked at him and said, so when are you going to go preach? He said, I don't know. He said, I haven't given an answer about it yet. So look, if God is in the restoring business and the restoration business, God gives you a door to walk through. By golly, you better take this one. Amen. How many of you realize that'd be a day that God will move in a powerful way in a little small town in Louisiana? Amen. All right, I'm going to be talking about some keys to receiving God's blessings today, and I really hope that you catch these and understand about these keys. How many of you ever been locked outside of your house or locked outside of your car and realize without keys, you ain't getting nowhere, you're not getting in, you're not getting down the road, so you need a way to get in, and Jesus Christ was the one who actually gave us the key to eternal blessing. I hope that you understand that to be able to get that key, requires us to obey Jesus. Amen? A lot of times people say, well, if you just say the sinner's prayer, that's good enough. But let me tell you something. We have to obey him. Jesus said, those that love me will obey me. How many of you realize that it's not just enough to say the, a memorized verse? It's about walking it out in your life. 
And when we walk out our faith in Christ, all of a sudden we start doing something called worshiping. And when we worship, guys, listen to me, worship is not just singing a song. Worship is living a life in accordance to God's ways. Amen? And when we worship Him, how do we worship Him? In the midst of the worst job that you could ever imagine, answering to the worst supervisor that you could ever think, and giving you the dirtiest job that you could ever do, and saying, yes, Lord, because I know that Colossians 3 says that whatever I do, I should do unto the Lord. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It matters who you're doing it for. Amen? Remember, you don't work for a man. You work for a God. Amen? And when you give thanks, it's an act of worship. And when you give praise unto Him, it's an act of worship. And when you tell testimonies, it's an act of worship. I remember one service here one day, we started it off and we started giving testimonies. And next thing I know, the whole service, everybody was just giving testimonies that Sunday. I never even preached that Sunday. What a wonderful day that the church came to life and said, God has done something for me and I want to give Him praise. Guys, let me tell you something. If you ever want to break depression, anxiety, and fear, listen to me. Praise. When you praise God, clouds roll away. Oppression gets broken. Chains of bondage get just broken free off of you. Shackles get removed from you. Prison doors swing wide open. Guards fall asleep so you can walk out. When you praise God, God will move in the midst. Amen? Listen to me. Your praise is almost like a key for God. When you praise Him, it enables Him to be able to do things for you. Amen? When you understand who He is, then we realize He is worthy of praise. If you would, turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22, please. This is one of those scriptures that on both of these verses, you need to have this underlined because this is for you. How many of you ever been scared about coming before the Lord? How many of you ever messed up and thought, man, I, I can't pray to Him right now. I can't seek Him out. I've done a big piece of stupid and it's splattered everywhere. Let me tell you something. God is not worried about the big pieces of stupid that you did. God is worried that you'll come to him. Amen? Listen to this. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22 through 23. Now, some of you have got a little bit different version. Now, this is out of the New Living Translation. It says, Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering the hope that we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep His promises. How many of you know if God promised to give you peace, He will keep that promise? And He will make your enemies sit at your feet while He serves you. Ain't that a wonderful word, amen? Oh, come on, you're not with me. Some of you don't have any enemies. Man, if you've got enemies, it is a wonderful promise that when God says that He'll even make your enemies be at peace with you. How many of you got some enemies that need to understand what peace is like and start walking ye in the way, amen? And start praising God and remember His, His promises. He faithfully keeps those. Guys, I'm at a point where in my life I've started learning to trust God. The more I trust God the more I find that he is capable of doing so much more. When I see that God is in the business of restoring my life, how many of you have got something you need restored right now in your life? Raise your hand. Oh, come on. That's all of you? Man, you got something that needs to be restored. You better be jumping up both hands and all legs. Amen? God wants to restore some things in your life, but you've got to turn it over to him. You see, when we trust God, it brings peace in our life. How many of you ever have heard the old saying that the older I get, the smarter my parents get? Anybody ever? Anybody remember that? Children, did y'all hear that? The older you get, the smarter we get. But I'm going to turn that around. The longer we follow God, the easier it is for us to trust God. 
Why? Because the longer we trust him, the longer we obey him, we realize what he's already done for us in the past, he will do again. Some of you have lived through accidents that you didn't have any right to live through. Some of you, your families have been broken apart. Kids have been gone, and all of a sudden, now they're brought back together. Let me tell you something. God is in the restoration business, and His words, His promises, they're faithful. Guys, I don't know about y'all, but how many of y'all remember the, the eight ball that we had as kids? Y'all remember that? The black eight ball, and had the little thing inside of it. We'd shake it up. We'd ask it questions like, is Kay going to say yes when I ask her to marry me? Probably not. <laughs> How many of you know that ball got thrown out the window? Amen? <laughs> Lying dang. But God, when you pray, when you seek God and you seek Him out, and you spend time with God and Him with this intimate worship, somebody once said that intimacy really meant into me see that God would look into me and see what I would need. That is true intimacy. Because how many of you have, have put walls up in front of your life and not let people in? How many of you have said, no, I can't trust somebody. I can't let them in because they're going to hurt me. But for God to look into you requires for you to pull down walls. And if you fully trust God, then you'll find that he's faithful. I find that when it comes to trusting, there's two types of people. There's those that can trust. How many of you know for some of you it's easy to trust somebody? And the reason why, because you found that those people that you trust, that they're worthy of it. Amen? And then there's some people that can't trust. Because too many people in their past has hurt them, lied to them, cheated on them, stole from them, hurt them, beat them, whatever. You fill in the blank, but they have hurt them, and somebody says, I'll never trust again. And let me tell you something, that is the saddest life that you'll ever live. Because when you won't allow somebody into your life to speak into you, you deny the Holy Spirit that lives within them. And when you have people in the church, remember what did we sing earlier, we recited earlier in the scripture about coming into the assembly. When you come into the assembly, guys, it's for other people to speak into your life, amen? Now, sometimes we get spoken into, but guess what? When you come to church, it's not always about you, amen? Sometimes it's about you going fulfilling God's promises to somebody else. You have a duty to do. It's not just the pastor's job to minister in the sanctuary. When you walk up into the church, and maybe you may be hurting, maybe you may have a hard time trusting somebody, but I, I'm going to give you a challenge. Trust the Lord to bring you the right people in your life. Trust the Lord to bring you that person that will look at you and speak truthfully to you. Amen? How many of you know that if they're a liar, they're a cheater, they're a backstabber, it's hard to trust them. I get it. But guess what? You can pray for that person, and yet you still need to have somebody that you can turn to. Because I listen to me, you can't do life all on your own. That is a lonely life. And it's not worth living. When you fully trust on God, you can also fully rely on Him to take care of the smallest needs. Just like a little girl going on the, this is what, the last weekend of doe hunting? All the rain and everything, and here she gets a chance to get something last weekend. Guys, I don't know about y'all, but I am firmly in belief that God wants to take care of every little small detail in our life. How many of you know that accidents don't happen? There are opportunities for God to move in your life if you allow them. If you would, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 6. Or 16 through 18. I know I've used this scripture several times up here, but I'm going to turn it around just a little bit. We're talking about trusting. Here's how you start trusting. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. There's three things. I hope you've got this underlined or highlighted in your Bible. If you don't, now's the time to do it. Verse 16 says, always be joyful. How many of you know it's, sometimes it's hard to be joyful all the time? Sometimes you just got to grumble, don't you? Sometimes we just need to keep our mouth shut and say, Lord, I need you to do something. And God, I'm going to be thankful that this police officer pulled me over. 
Some of you will say, Pastor, you're a liar. Last night, Kay and I was at the, the fuel stop, and we were getting fuel, and there was somebody up there that was decided they wanted to race down university. And boy, the cars, I mean, they were souped up, and they were loud, and they were going hard. We finally, we get through with our getting our gas, we pull out on the university, we go up there to the red light by Star Street, and we look up there by the entrance where that red light is turning into the university, and there's a popo right there, got somebody pulled over in the middle of the lane. And I remember sitting there thinking, woohoo, they got that guy, they got him, praise God. Wet streets, late at night, people speeding, how many of you know that's not a good thing? Man, I was, I was thankful that the police officer was out there doing their job. And guys, the people's lives got saved. Amen? How many of you ought to give thanks for police officers in your life? Police officers in our community. Amen? We got several of them here in our, in our congregation. Uh, I support them. We encourage them. Even all the first responders that have got to re pull up. Be thankful for those people in your life. Amen? They're there to serve you. What is their logo? To serve and to protect. Amen. That's what God wants us to do for people around. So we always need to be uh, joyful always. Verse 17, never stop praying. When? Never. How many of you know sometimes it's hard for us to get into prayer? And is, is it just me or how many of you ever started praying and after about two or three minutes your brain starts filtering off to the right? You start thinking about that, that, that dressing that your wife made. You start thinking about the Sunday football game. You start thinking about where is that stupid dog at and why is it so quiet in here. You start thinking about all these things and you get distracted. But it says that we should never, ever, ever, ever stop praying. So when you never stop praying, guess what? That means you're in a continual relationship with God. And guys, let me tell you something. How many of you have got, uh, most of you would say that you don't have enough time in your life uh, for other things, but I promise you that if you were to look in your life and start saying, what could I get rid of? You'd probably find a few things that you could get rid of to be able to spend more time with God. Verse 18, this is the hard one. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you to, who belong in Christ Jesus. So two things, be joyful always or forever. Uh, never stop praying. And be thankful in all circumstances. These three things, I call this the fortune cookie of the gospel. How many of you ever go to Chinese restaurants, you break up the fortune cookie, and you read it, and you see this little fortune? First thing that you read on it is, well, that ain't right. But when you read this, listen to me. I'll say it again all together. Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong in Christ Jesus. If you ever wondered what your will was, or what God's will was for you in your life, it was to spend time with Him, to pray continuously, to be joyful always. Guys, I don't know about y'all, but when I look at uh, my God, I can't help but being thankful. Because, man, I grew up as a homeless child, and now I'm married. I live on a farm ranch. I've got more land than I can ever use. God has been good. How many of you know that if he can take a little child from living on a park bench and give him the woman of his dreams, the children that really are going to be the seed to my future, to my destiny, God has got a plan for each and every one of us. Amen? Peace begins with understanding God's will for your life. How many of you understand what God's will is for your life today? Some of you are still struggling with that. Some of you are still looking at it. Some of you are saying you're 60 years old and saying, Lord, what am I supposed to be doing? Go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16, 17, 18. Deal with those three things and then you'll find your way. I was talking with my son, D-Ray, this, this week. He's gotten out of the army this year. He's trying to find a way. And I said, it's funny how life seems to find you. You don't have to find your way. You just have to start living your life according to God's plans. And everything just seems like it works out. Why? Because when we quit trying to make things happen ourselves, guess what? Then that allows God to do it. And when we get God's way, then we get the best way. So many times we try to do things on our own. And what do we do? We mess it up. How many of you have really done some big pieces of stupid in your life and you messed up? It's okay. With God, you always get a do-over. That's what I love about him. God is not in the business of beating you up. God may correct you, but God doesn't want to beat you. Amen? 
All right, let's go down to John chapter 14, verses 23 through 27. And guys, believe it or not, we are almost done. Rayford's looking at me like I'm not telling the truth, but I am. John chapter 14, verses 23 through 27. Say amen when you get there. Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. And anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. Oh, what am I telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything that I have told you. I am leaving you with a gift. Now I want you to underline this. Highlight it, whatever. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace that I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Verse 27, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. How many of you need a little peace of mind and heart in today's lifetime? When you start watching the news, your anxiety and your blood pressure rises up. You start getting mad. You start cussing. You start getting all upset. Guys, guess what? That is not what God desires for you. God desires that regardless of what the news says, God is greater than the, the telecaster. Amen? God is greater than the reporter. It's not the reporter's word that says what's going to happen tomorrow is God's words. Amen? Oh, man. When we start looking at end times things and we start realizing all these things going on, it's easy when we start studying end times to get a little worried, to get a little fretful. But let me tell you something. God gave us the word so that we would know in advance what God is going to do so when the times come, we could take comfort, amen, and take peace. God is trying to give you through his word the recipe, the map, everything that you need to make it through life and still trust Him. Amen? Even in the midst of all the heartaches, problems, and diseases, and worries, financial issues, guys, God still wants you just to trust Him, even when things look bad. And guys, I want you to understand this. Peace is always given. Jesus said that He gives you the peace of heart and peace of mind. It is not made. How many of you know that every time that there's been a peace covenant signed, we've always broken it? But when God makes a covenant of peace, he keeps it. Amen. Eternally. Guys, I don't care how hard you work to try to make peace in your life. Without God involved, peace will never happen in your life. It takes God to be able to bring home that peace. And when you have that peace in your home, it brings this trust. Because the more you trust God, the more peace that you'll have. I want to ask you this question. How many of you ever given thanks for your house that you have. Anybody? How many of you have ever given thanks for your job that you got? How many of you have given thanks for your family? How many of you given thanks for just whatever? God is worthy of giving thanks for everything. Amen? And when you give Him thanks, all of a sudden, it opens up this door and it opens up this avenue for you to come unto the Lord, for you to stand and worship Him. Husbands, listen to me. The greatest way that you can ever turn around and come to your wife and bring peace is to turn around and tell your wife that you were wrong and she was right. If you do, listen to me. She's going to fall out on the floor and she's going to go into a coma. She's going to wonder, what did he just say? And she's going to pass right out. And all of a sudden, you'll find that when she wakes back up, she's going to love you and she's like, he said he's sorry. How many of you know that when we go before God without any excuses and say, Lord, you were right, I was wrong. How many of you know that God is waiting for that moment? Amen. How many of you, you know, we're coming up on Christmas time and we're coming up on the holiday seasons and a lot of people feel lonely during the holidays. If you've ever felt lonely during the holidays, raise your hand. How many of you ever felt depressed during holiday seasons? How many of you felt broke during holiday seasons? 
Every parent in the house just raised their hand. Guys, listen to me. You can be broke, but be so rich with God. A heavy debt does not bring peace in your life. It brings chaos. How many of you know your credit cards are not a good way to celebrate Christmas? Don't go to your, your credit cards and spend money on Christmas thinking that you can buy your children's love. Because listen to me, what you bought them in two weeks, they're not going to be playing with it ever again. But that debt will continue growing and growing. And guess what? By November and March, or November and December of next year, you're going to be trying to figure out how you're still paying that off. Amen? Guys, listen to me. It's not the prizes. It's not the, the toys that your children need. What your children need is you to spend time with them and allow them to see the Holy Spirit move in your life. And if you are in a need, what better place than allow the Holy Spirit to come move in your life? Amen. Teach them what it's like to trust in the Holy Spirit. Some of you don't understand about the Holy Spirit uh, because maybe you were grazed up in a certain denomination or something. And I'm here to tell you the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Holy Spirit is probably the most peaceful thing that you'll ever know in your life. He's never going to make you do something that you'd never want to do. Amen? How many of you ever been into a revival or been into a place and it started getting kind of wild up in there and you wanted to run out of the place? You saw people running, shouting, screaming, hollering, uh, swinging from ropes off the ceilings, uh, the flag core. I went into a church one time and they had a flag core in there. The woman dang near knocked me out with the flagpole. Now listen to me, I've been shot before, and it didn't hurt as bad as that flag did. And I remember sitting thinking, this surely can't be church. This can't be what God wants you to understand. But let me tell you something, a lot of people have different ways of expressing their worship unto the Lord. And when I had to come to peace with that and understanding, it doesn't matter what somebody else does. What's the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Maybe the Holy Spirit's speaking to you about coming to the altars. Now, maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about lifting your hands in worship. Maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about apologizing for something that you did wrong to somebody. Maybe the Holy Spirit is trying to open up a door to bring peace into your life. And we might be struggling with the idea of doing what he said because you can't see how God will do this. But it's not a matter if you see how, it's a matter of whether or not you obey. God moves in your obedience. The words that Jesus used were not his words, but his Father's words. Guys, we've got to be careful of any words that, that come to us. And be careful when you walk up and say, Thus saith the Lord, you better be making sure that God has said that to you. Because if you go up there and you use his name lightly, you can lead somebody astray. And let me tell you something, you can hurt them. In Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, if you all look up here on the screen, it'll be up here. Romans 5, verses 1 through 5 of the New Living Translation says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, our faith, Christ brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. I want you to really pay attention. It says that he brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. How many people in this place can say you deserve the glory or the grace that God gave you? I promise you there's not a single person in this room that can say you deserve that. Jesus Christ gave you something that you did not deserve. It is a grace that came from God and nobody else could give you what he has offered you. It says, because of our faith, uh, Christ brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation and this hope will not lead us to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. 
Guys, that scripture right there brings life to me in such a way. First of all, it tells me I don't deserve what I've gotten. Amen? Husbands, you need to look at your wives and say, I don't deserve you. But because of what Jesus did for me, I've been blessed with you. And you want to touch your wife's heart, you tell her that. And mean it. Don't do it just because the pastor said. Mean it. There are several things. I want you to write down these six things that I'm fixing to give you. Get a piece of paper. Some of you say, Pastor, about this Holy Spirit thing, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, maybe because you're thinking about how other people express the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling you right now what the, whole, what the Bible says that you need to express the Holy Spirit. Catch this and write this down. The first thing is by operating in the Word of God. That's a no-brainer. When you take the Word of God and you start operating in the Word of God, when it says, bless your enemies, how many of you know that's a hard thing to do? But it's a godly thing to do. Operate in the Word of God. Second thing, walking and giving forgiveness. How many of you know that if you're walking around with unforgiveness in your heart, it's going to make a lot of problems in your life? And if you forgive, it opens up a door for the hatred to move out and for God's blessings to move in. There's only so much can room that your heart can contain. What's it full of? Guys, forgiveness will all of a sudden take the hatred, take the pain, take all that stuff out of your life. The third thing is, listen to me, helping others. How many of you know Christmas time is coming up around the corner? In the next couple of weeks, there's going to be some boxes over here. There'll be probably a tree over here in the corner or something like that. We're going to be adopting some kids and doing some things for them. Guys, let me tell you something. Helping others, regardless if it's one of these trees, regardless if it's a family member, a neighbor, a co-worker, find somebody that God will lead you to to help them. And watch what God will do with you through them. God will bless you. The fourth thing is walking in joy. All right, how many of you remember the laugh-in back in the 70s? Y'all remember that? How many of you remember Tiny Tim? The song Tiptoeing Through the Tulips. Y'all remember that? That thing used to scare me every time it came on TV. Still scares me today. But when we walk joyfully and we go everywhere in joy, people look at you and say, that person's a rather peculiar person. Do you know the Bible says that we are a peculiar people? Maybe because we do walk in joy. We're happy. Because, guys, if you're always walking around and you're looking down at that can that's down on the ground that you're kicking, that ain't where God wants you to look at. The Bible says that I look up into the hills where my help comes from. Why are we always looking down when we ought to be looking up? When we start looking up, God will do things. The fifth thing is praying. When you're feeling lonely, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling like things are going wrong, just start praying. Because you know what? When I pray... Depression and anxiety and fear and everything just dissipates away. Why? Because when I pray, I'm inviting the Holy Spirit to come in the presence, and chaos can, cannot live in the presence of God. The last thing that I'm going to give you today is start giving thanks. Give thanks in all things. Pray forever. Never stop it. And be joyful always. I know that those three things are back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18 seems like such a small thing. But when we remember that if we start operating in the Word and believing the Word of God and start speaking the Word of God and walking in it, then all of a sudden we'll find it easier that we forgive. And when we forgive, it opens up the door for us to start helping others. And when we start helping others, it helps us walk in joy. Guys, I don't know about y'all, but the church needs to quit being so depressed. The church needs to be a place where joy is abound. Amen? And then if you start having the joy, then when you're joyful, it's just easy to come to prayer. When you're depressed, it's hard to start praying, ain't it? But sometimes that's when you need to fight the hardest. The last thing is start giving thanks. Giving praise. Why? Because He is worthy. Amen? And if you start realizing what God has done for you, it is so easy to praise Him. Guys, I'm going to ask you this question. Is there anybody in this room today that said, Pastor, I've been living in a life where I felt like I was very alone. 
I'm depressed. I'm anxiety ridden. Nobody cares for me. I'm here to tell you that God cares enough that just as Judy, we prayed about keys. He cared about Judy enough to give her the opportunity to find keys. How many of you know that's small? He cares enough that he's willing to restore a relationship for Pastor George and his grandfather, his grandfather-in-law, should I say. That God would open up doors for God to just move a mighty miracle. Those are two ends of the spectrum. You may be somewhere in the middle of that. Maybe you just need family. Maybe you need a little hope. Maybe you need a little joy. Guys, I'm going to tell you, the first place that you'll find it is right here at these altars in the presence of God. There's not a single person in this room that will laugh at you and make fun of you because you come to the altar. When you come to the altar, it's a way of declaring that God, you are greater than I. That Lord, you desire to hear my prayers and I'm coming to pray to you now. I'm coming to give thanks to you and I want to be able to share everything that you've done. Not just for me, but for my family, for those people around me. I'm going to ask that you bow your heads and close your eyes. For those that are here today that have been struggling with something, maybe you've just got this heavy weight on your chest. Maybe you've got this deep sorrow that's in your spirit. Maybe you've got this longing for something that you just don't have. I'm telling you, the getting place is right up here at these altars. If you will come down right now, now's the time. If you need to come find something, come down to the altars. Allow God to move in your life. Allow God to speak to you and just touch you. Allow God to bless you right where you're at. Because the person that doesn't, that's struggling with this, when you leave today, you'll still be struggling. Today is the day that God is willing to break shackles free. If that's you, come on down. Come to the altar. Let God do something with you. We're just going to sit here in quiet worship for a moment. We're just going to allow God to just move. Just let Him speak to you. Father, you've been so good to us. Lord, there's not a single one of us in this house that deserves the grace that you have given us. Father, we don't deserve anything. But Lord, what we do deserve, Father, you decided to spare us. The Lord, that you sent your son named Jesus to be able to die on the cross and for those who would repent and believe in you and ask you to be our Lord and Savior and obey his words, that, Lord, we would be blessed and we would be touched. We would be counted as one of your very own. Lord, we know that the days are getting close for your return. And, the Lord, there's no time like today. That, Lord, as we seek you out, that, Lord, your word says that you'll hear our prayers. Lord, we can't be too far away from you. That, Lord, as we seek you out, Lord, your word says that we will find you. Lord, if we would just open the door when you knock. That, Lord, if we would just cry out unto you, that, Lord, that you would hear. That, Lord, if we would just worship you. That, Father, that you would receive that worship. So, Lord, for each person that's come down to the altar today looking for you, Lord, I pray that, Father, they find you in such a way that whatever strongholds the enemy has raised up against them will crumble, will fall. They'll be removed, dismantled, taken away, Lord, never to rise again. Father, for those that are looking for restoration, Lord, you are the God of restoration. Father, your whole operation with Jesus was to restore us back unto you. 
So Lord, I ask in Jesus' name for each person today that Lord is looking for restoration that they find it. Father, for those that are looking for release from an addiction, Father, you know more than I do. But Lord, I pray for those people that are looking for release, Lord, that Father, they find it. That Father, they'll be forgiven. Father, they'll be made whole. They will be healed in Jesus' name. That, Lord, it would be like that uh, that paralyzed person that sat beside the pool when Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be healed? But, Lord, we look to you with no excuses. And, Lord, we cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Lord, I pray over this congregation today that, Lord, they're able to walk in favor. Lord, they're able to walk in peace. Lord, they're able to walk in joy. Lord, where the enemy has moved against them, those stone walls will be crushed, be removed, and be torn down. That, Father, the people that are walking, Father, in, don't even know where they're going. But, Lord, they find purpose. They find direction. Father, they find a sense of joy in their life. Lord, I pray for the callings that you have on each person. Your word says that the giftings and callings are irrevocable upon those that you have given. So Lord, I ask that you start stirring up the gifts of your people. Start blessing them, Lord. Start using them exactly where they're at. Father, whether they're working at Walmart, the grocery store, or whether they're working at the post office, Lord, whether they work at the White House. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name, that, Father, your people rise up with a holy voice and worship you exactly where they are. Lord, they are blessed people. Lord, I speak your blessings upon them. Lord, I speak that your peace and your joy, and, Father, everything that you would give them, Father, would be evident. Lord, as that song sings, or that we sing here recently, the evidence is all around me. Lord, I ask, Father, that you would bless them, that evidence would be all around them. That, Lord, as they go forth their way, that, Lord, they would be great representatives of your kingdom. That, Lord, they would speak with power and authority and with grace and peace. So, Lord, we love you and we praise you. And, Lord, I just bless these people. Lord, they're blessed because they're the head and not the tail. They're the top and not the bottom. Lord, they're blessed in their comings. They're blessed in their goings. Lord, they're blessed in the highways and the byways and the rural areas. Lord, they're blessed in their homes, their families, their health, their finances, their jobs, their herds, their crops. And that, Lord, their barns are so full they don't need bigger ones. Lord, they just need more neighbors. And, Lord, we thank you that you are the God that multiplies. So, Lord, we praise you, we thank you, and we just glorify in the name of Jesus today. In Jesus' mighty name. All God's people said. Guys, won't you give the Lord a big hand clap this morning? Guys, as always, the altars are still open. If y'all want to come down, we'll pray for you. But if not, get out and go experience the goodness of God. It's all about you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all be blessed.